coming to the third case, it's a term baby, 3.4 kilos, born by elective cesarean at 39 weeks for previous cesarean delivery. No antenatal risk factors. The baby did not need any resuscitation, but was noted to have some pachypnea and grunting the two hours of age. The midwife later said that at the delivery, the baby was uh, frothing uh, saliva out of the mouth. So this is a common picture. The babies who are at risk of transient tachypnea of newborn often have excessive frothing in the first few minutes. And uh, baby is transferred to the NICU for monitoring. The baby was noted to have worsening of the respiratory distress, needing oxygen of 0.3 to make saturation. There were no risk factors for sepsis. So this is a typical picture of a wet lung or transient kidney of newborn, also called the respiratory distress syndrome type 2. Uh, the fetal lung is filled with fluid. And uh, normally when the labor process starts, there is a chemical reversal of the fluid secretion and absorption process. So the fluid starts getting absorbed into the lung vasculature even before the delivery. And during the vaginal delivery process, there is a squeeze effect. So, but uh, during the cesarean deliveries, especially if it's elective, that is before the onset of labor, this chemical reabsorption process does not take place. And uh, it's a baby is caught by surprise, so to speak. And uh, the labor related increased stress hormone levels doesn't happen as well. So, uh, Usually it happens in term babies with elective cesarean or even with precipitate labor where you have not had much time to go through the labor process. The baby presents with early onset respiratory distress and this usually settles over 24 to 48 hours, though in some babies it takes three to five days, especially if some babies behave more premature with the highly complained chest wall with significant retractions and they may continue to have this respiratory distress for a few days where we need to carefully monitor them during their initiating such feeds and progressing. So supportive management and use of CPAP, very rarely mechanical ventilation may be needed for TTN as well. And uh, as I said, in infant of diabetic mother or in uh, borderline GTT, where the baby comes out at 37 to 38 weeks, we often see an overlap in picture of uh, RDS with TTN and you may need surfactant rarely in some of these cases. There is a case for antenatal steroids for elective cesarean at 37 and 38 weeks of gestation and um, there is evidence to show that it reduces the risk of admission to the NICU due to transient achypnea. It also leads to earlier recovery in case the baby gets TTN. The chest x-ray typically shows coarse perihilar streaks and prominent lung vasculature. There is evidence of interstitial and pleural fluid and prominent interlobar fissures. There may be overinflation as well. So this is a uh, streakiness and you can see the interlobar fissure, uh, some haziness in the lower zone suggestive of pleural effect. 